Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to solve another easy question. Today's question is from Cracking the Coding Interview, and this question wants you to sort a stack. So, if you've been watching some of the videos on this channel, you know that I love these types of questions. I love questions that are intuitive, questions that you can actually come up with during this interview, and this is a really interesting example of those types of questions. So how do you sort a stack? Well, as you may know, a stack has the property of last in, first out, which means the last element that you put into the stack is gonna be the first element that you get out. So to, uh, take for example, a stack of books and a table, the last one that you put in is the first one that you're gonna get out. So that's what a stack is. So you would see that this is incredibly difficult to do if you only have access to one element. You don't have access to like the last element and the first element, you can't do like a two-way linear search and then do like a while loop, you have a right variable, left variable, right indices and left indices, and then come together swapping the elements. So it's difficult to sort a stack. So this question wants us to sort a stack without using any other data structure, which makes it incredibly more difficult. So if, if they allowed us to use another data structure, of course you can pop the elements out of the stack, put them into an array and use arrays that sort, and then push them back into the stack. But this question doesn't want us to do that. This question wants us to sort a stack without using any other data structure. So how do we do this? Well, to solve this question, since they only want us to use stacks, we're going to use another stack that's going to hold our temporary variables, and then we're going to maintain the state of the temporary stack by sorting all the elements that we push into the temporary stack. So how do we solve this question? So we're going to iterate through the main stack. This is our main stack, and then we're going to pick a pivot value, and then we're going to order the elements in the temporary stack, this guy right here, with respect to our pivot value. So pick an element in the main stack while iterating through, iterate through the temporary stack, and then order our elements in the temporary stack based on that pivot value. So let's do that. Let's say we're iterating through the main stack, and then we pick a pivot value of 9. Let's pick this as our pivot value. And then we're going to iterate through our temporary stack. And whenever we get to a number that's greater than our current pivot value, we pop it out of the temporary stack and then push it into the main stack and then put the pivot value into the temporary stack. For now, we have no elements in the temporary stack, so we just put 9. And now our pivot value becomes six. Remember, we're dealing with the stack, so we only have access to the element that is at the top of the stack. So now pivot value is six. So we're gonna order the elements in the temporary stack based on this pivot value with respect to the pivot value. So we're gonna iterate through temp whenever we get to a number that's greater than the pivot value, we pop it out and push it into the main stack. So we get to nine. 9 is greater than 6, so we pop it out, push it into the main stack, and then push 6, which is smaller than 9, into the temporary stack. So this is good enough. Now, this is where the interesting thing happens. After you push the element into the temporary stack, you have to push the elements that you popped out of the temporary stack back into the temporary stack. What element did we pop out? We popped out 9, so we push 9 back in to the temporary stack. After all, 9 was greater than 6 anyways, so it could come after 6. So now our pivot value becomes 7. So we order the elements in the temporary stack based on the pivot value, iterating through the temporary stack whenever we get to a number that's greater than the pivot value. We pop it, into the, pop it out of the temp stack, we push it into the main stack, and then we put the pivot value into the temp stack. So let's do that. We get to 9. 9 is greater than 7. Take it out, we get to 6, oh wait, 6 is less than 7, so 6 is in its rightful position. So we take 7, put it in, and then we put 9 back in. Since we popped it out, we push it back in. After all, it was greater than 7, so it should come after 7. Our pivot value becomes 5. So 5 is a pivot, order the elements in temp with respect to 5, iterating through all the elements in temp. So we get to 9. Is 9 greater than 5? Yes, it is. Pop it out. We get to 7. Is 7 greater than 5? Yes, it is. Pop it out. Put it into main. And then we get to 6. Is 6 greater than 5? Yes, it is. 
I'll pop it up, put it into main, and oh wait, there are no other elements in temp, so we put 5 into temp. And now we push all the elements into temp, all the elements that we popped out of it, we put them back in. After all, they were greater than 5, so they should come after 5. So we put 6, 7, and 9. And now our pivot value becomes 2. So we take 2, becomes pivot, and now we order the elements in temp with respect to 2. So whenever we get to a number that's greater than 2, we pop it out of temp, put it back into main, so we get to 9. Is 9 greater than 2? Yes, it is. All of these numbers are greater than 2, so we, we're going to pop all of them out, push them into main, and then we take 2, push it back in, push it into temp, and then we push back all the elements that we popped out of temp. After all, they were greater than 2, so they should come after 2. And at this point, we're done with the algorithm, but our algorithm is really stupid. It doesn't know when to stop. It only knows when to stop when there are no more elements in the main. And so it checks, are there any other elements in main? No, there are no other elements in main. And now the only thing that's left to do is to push the elements back into main. All the elements from temp, we push them back into main, and now they're gonna be in their rightful sorted order. Now, if you look at it from a top-down perspective here, they are sorted in descending order. We want to sort them in ascending order. So we push them back into main, iterate through temp, and then push all the elements from temp into main. So let's do that. We get to 9, push 9 back in, 7, 7 in, <coughs> 6, 5, and 2. And now we've successfully sorted the stack in ascending order. And yeah, that's how you solve this question. For some reason, I really like questions that have some visual components. Uh, I feel like those are actually good questions for interviews because they uh, strike conversation with your interviewer. But yeah, that's enough ranting from me. All you have to do now is to return the main stack and you're done. So what's the time and space complexity of this algorithm? So time complexity is not really complex because we're going through the main stack to select a pivot element, and then we're going through the temporary stack, both of which are going to contain at most n elements. So total time complexity is going to be O of n squared time. And then for space complexity, we're storing two stacks that contain n elements each. So total space complexity is O of n. So yeah, that's how you solve this question. Let's dive right into the code. Okay, so I have already created the stack and I've added the numbers 96752 into the stack and I'm calling the sorting function uh, sort and then I'm printing out the result. So all we have to do is to develop the sorting function, which takes in one argument, which is the main stack. So the idea is to create an additional stack which would be sorted and we maintain its state by popping larger elements out and pushing smaller elements in. So we're going to iterate through the main stack and then pick a pivot value. So while um, main is not empty, so we say while there are elements in main, we pick a pivot value. So let's say int pivot is equal to main.pop. And now we're going to iterate through a temporary stack and then sorting the items in the temporary stack with respect to this pivot value. I just realized that I don't have a temporary stack, so let me create one. It's going to be a stack of integer. We call it temp is equal to new stack. So now we're going to say while we still have elements in temp, so while temp is not empty, And the value at the top of the temp stack is greater than the pivot value, then we pop that value out, and then we put the pivot value in. So, and temp.pick is greater than pivot. Uh, so if that is the case, we pop this value out, and then we push it into the main stack. So we say main the push temp that pop. Cool. Oh, uh, so if this wasn't the case, it means that the value at the top of the temp stack is less 
then the pivot value. So the pivot value can come on top of it. So we just add the pivot value on top. So we say temp the push. And what are we pushing? We're pushing pivot. So that's it. That's the sorting algorithm. So all you have to do now is to add the elements into main so that they appear in ascending order. So we say while our uh, temp is not null, is not empty, well, we still have elements in temp, we just do main.push temp.pop. That's it. I'm going to add a few comments before I upload the code to GitHub, but for now let's test it out. Cool, it's 25679. I'm already printing the values out in the main function. So yeah, so that's how you solve this question. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel and then share this video around the community. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and comment down below if you have something to say and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.